Hello everyone, welcome to the seventh and last section of this course. In this section we're going to follow a different route and explore the more advanced concepts of C-sharp. We will begin with an introduction to delegates and lambda expressions. We will move on to studying multithreading and parallelism. Next we will see link, a different way of interacting with collections and databases. And we will finally close this section with a closer look at extension methods in C Sharp. Delegates are a fundamental part of C Sharp. They are the foundation of events which make it easier to create event driven applications like desktop apps and mobile applications. Lambda expressions are fast ways to write callback methods that are used with delegates. Throughout this course we have relied heavily on lambda expressions. That's because you can use them without trying to understand the underlying parts that make them work, but it's always better to get deeper knowledge of them. So in this video you will learn what the observer pattern is, how to implement the observer pattern with delegates, that's where delegates come in, and how to write callback methods the quick way using lambda expressions. Now imagine we're having a machine class that monitors the operation of a certain physical machine. Let's also say that we want to log the machine's temperature every time it changes. But we won't just log it to one place. The requirements state that we must log to the console window, to a local file and also to a web service. The observer pattern is the best way to do that. In the observer pattern we have the observers, which in this example are the three loggers, and the observable, which is the machine. The observers have a common interface and they are responsible for registering themselves with the observable. So now every time an event is triggered, in this case, in the case of this example, the change in the temperature of the machine, every observer that listens to that event will catch it and do its thing, its handling. Let's head straight to the code. We have implementation of the machine we talked about in the previous slide. We have a backing field for storing the temperature and the publicly exposed property. And we also have a method that increments the temperature of the machine every second that passes and stops only if the temperature rises too high to 100 degrees Celsius. Now, let's see how we can create a delegate that will be the collection of observer methods, the collection of observers, since the machine is the observable. Notice that we use the delegate keyword, void is the type that will be returned by the loggers, in this case we don't want to return anything so it's void, and we need a double for the previous temperature and also a double for the current temperature. So this delegate tells the runtime that it will only accept methods that take two parameters, two doubles and return void, return nothing. Now that we have created a delegate, we should add uh, an instance of that delegate to our machine class. This temp changed delegate will be filled with all the observer methods that will listen to when the temperature changes. The next thing we need is a method, a way to register the observers. Let's call this method register temp watcher. This method will take one argument will, which will be the method, the, the observer method and we're going to add that method using this overloaded operator the plus equal operator to the temp change delegate. Now let's set up a method that uh, let's call this on temp change. This method will be called every time the temperature changes and will be responsible for calling all the methods inside the delegate. So the delegate is a collection of methods that have similar signature and with this line of code we call them all, we call all of them. The delegate may contain one method, it may contain several methods, we call them all. Now all we need to do is go to the setter of our current temperature property and configure it in a way that triggers, invokes the delegate when the temperature changes. So when the temperature changes the on temp changed method will be called, actually this is better to, it's better be private. And this is the value, a few corrections here. And now we're ready to actually write the observers. Remember that the observer has to have a certain method signature and a certain return value. The return value should be void in this case 
and it should take uh, two arguments one for the previous temperature and one for the current temperature this is going to be the observer that logs to the console window so we are going to use the console.writeLine method that we saw in the previous sections the temperature changed from prev to current so we log that to the console window next let's implement that logs to a file that logs the temperature changes to a file we're actually not going to implement a web service now so we're going to go with just the two of these uh, handlers here we can use a stream writer like we saw in one of the previous sections to write the same thing to a file though let's call that file temp.txt temps.txt now remember what I told you in that video about the uh, stream writers it's better for these operations especially if they're long to be asynchronous so we have to use the write line async method we could go with the write line method but especially for this example where uh, the machine is working and we want to log to the console window it's better to use uh, asynchronous programming for that and I'm forgetting something this should be true so we append the temperatures instead of writing over them every time the temperature changes and now we can create an instance of the machine and now it's the time to register the observers notice that we were not using parentheses at the end of log temp to console nor at the end of log temp to file because we're passing the method by reference to the delegate and we're not actually calling the method now let's turn on the machine run the application and we certainly do get the temperatures on the console window you can clearly see that every second that the temperature changes it gets logged to the console window and if we visit the temps.txt file we can see the same there's one more thing you need to be aware of there could be a case in which there are no registered observers for our on temp changed event in that case calling the temp change delegate will result in an exception so it's better to check against null every time you're calling you're invoking a delegate now let's replace the two loggers with lambda expressions so that we won't have to maintain two method definitions we can use lambda expressions to replace the the methods that we the static methods that we defined in this class with inline methods this is lambda expression syntax we're using parentheses to specify the arguments and we're using the fat arrow the symbol the equal followed by the greater and than symbol is called fat arrow in the csup world and let's take this statement copy it inside the block of the lambda expression remove this method and we're going to do the same with the long temp to file method again we're specifying the arguments inside parentheses if we don't have any arguments the parentheses can be empty and we're copying over the the body of the function and we can safely remove the log temp to file method recognize lambda expression syntax from previous videos also since this was an async method lambda expressions can also be async we just have to use the async keyword before the arguments list now let's run the application and see if we get the same result as before and of course we do at least for the console i'm going to to stop i'm going to use the visual studio stop button to stop the application from running or else it will go all the way to 100 and of course if i check the temps.txt file it works this is how delegates and lambda expressions work